Episode three, pastors teaching faith, but don't have it. My son is recording and using the space where I usually record. So episode three, we're talking about tithing and how it's not required. And a pastor responded to me under one of the videos and disclaimer, we don't bash pastors over here. We don't bash churches. I speak about my experience and we don't go, go tip for tap for scriptures because that's powerless, that's useless, and I really don't care. But I, I said that the people in your congregations, they're tithing, but they're still broke. They have no financial literacy. They don't have savings. They're still in debt. They're living day to day, paycheck to paycheck, and they're struggling and trying and worry about paying tithes. And the comment that the pastor said was a scripture. I think it was 1 Corinthians 9, 14. He said, if you are, if you teach the gospel, you should be fed by the gospel. That is the most heartbreaking thing to me. I almost want to cry. The fact that I just said that there are people in the pews that are struggling to pay tithes because they're scared and they're afraid and they're not even required to. They're living paycheck day to day, don't know what to do on extension plans, on payment plans, worried and living in fear, anxiety, and all the things behind doing something they're not required to do. And the pastor's response is, well, we supposed to get paid. And some of you are not even preaching the gospel, number one. You're not even preaching the good news. Some of you are not even preaching 10% worth of word to be demanding something that's not required. Not only that, when you say, I'm preaching the gospel, you're talking about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, you said that. We, we know that. So just because you say that every Sunday, you're required to be paid. And just because you say you preach the gospel, you should get paid. Okay, that doesn't mean that somebody is required and you can demand 10% of their income when it's not required. That's the whole point. If you're preaching and doing what you need to do, people will give. It is a principle. You see it on TikTok when those people go live and... They're telling them how to do skincare or they're telling their followers and the people that are watching them how to fix this meal. When people like it and it's good news to them, they're going to buy them a hat. They're going to put those little hats on their head. They're going to put the sunglasses and they're going to send them flowers and do all the things. Even on Facebook, you can get people stars and it you know translates into money. So if people aren't giving and you have to fuss and yell every week, maybe you're not teaching. Maybe you're not giving them the word. Because people will give where they're fed. People do it all the time. And it's the fact that you're thinking about yourself. When somebody tells you the plight of people, the first thing you do is think about yourself. You're proving my point. If you're not getting paid, then you're not doing your job. Isn't that how it works in the world, period? If you don't do your job, you don't get paid. And when was the last time you asked your congregation, how are y'all doing financially? Some, I'm not saying all, some really don't care. All they care about is that they get paid. I care about people. That's why I'm not scared to talk about anybody or, or address anybody because I care about people. I don't care about your ego. I don't care about your title. I don't care how long you've been doing it. I don't care how you say man of God. I don't care about any of that. It hurts me to my core to see people struggling and in lack especially our people, because of lack of knowledge that most leaders can't even give the people. All you care about is, are they giving their tithes and their offering? Ask the people, how are you all doing financially? No, you're too busy looking at the books and seeing that they're not giving and you go fussing. That's all you do. You go and fuss at the people. Instead of asking, how are you all doing? Let me bring in a financial literacy coach. Let me bring in somebody because you say all they got to do is just give and God's going to bless them. That's not the case. Most people, again, our people do not have financial literacy. They do not know how to be a good steward over their money. They don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to use it. They don't know how to sow. They don't know how to invest. You know, what's interesting is that leaders are so quick. The pastors, they're so quick to say, you need to follow me. I'm your leader. I'm your shepherd. Okay. Well, if they're not financially abundant and they're struggling, that falls on you because they're you know, following you, you're their leader. It falls on your teaching or the lack thereof. Majority of people are financially suffering, not all, but the majority of them are because they do not know how to handle money. It is not as simple as they just need to give and be blessed. That's a lack of knowledge. That's ignorance on leaders parts and on the people that follow. And I've been there. I understand that. 
And please, let's not get into where they just don't have faith that God will supply. You don't either. Because if you're not going to get up there and tell them the good news that tithing is not required, like a pastor told me, don't tell them that, even though I know it's true because them Negroes won't give, then that means you don't have the faith that you're teaching. Why don't you have faith that God will provide for your ministry, your calling? You're telling them to have faith. Just believe God. You believe God and let the people be free. I want to give you a challenge. Test your own faith. Congregation, for this whole month, I want you to take your finances and take care of your household. That extension plan, instead of tithing, since it's not required and God just tells you to be a cheerful giver and give as you decided in your heart, don't worry about giving here. Sorry. Don't worry about giving here. Give, make sure your household is taken care of. And if it is, find somebody on your street for a whole month, 30 days. Y'all always want $30 for a 30-day seed and 30 oh, for 30 days. Make sure everything in your household is taken care of. And then look on your street. If, that's, if you're fine, go down the street and find somebody. Ask God to lead you. Have a discerning spirit. See a true need and go meet that. Don't worry about the church. God going to take care of the church. Where's your faith in that? Have faith. That God will take care of you. Show them how to walk by faith. Show them that you believe in God and you truly have faith. Pastors are teaching faith, but you yet don't have it. Well, the Bible says, given it shall be given. That's right. Did it say to who? It says, given it shall be given. That's that Bible college school behavior coming out. Did it say to who? It says, give and it shall be given. So give the people the good news that they don't have to tithe and they can give as they so choose. And if your word is of value, the things that you're teaching and bringing to them, they will freely give to the ministry. So encourage that husband. You haven't taken your wife out on a vacation because you're struggling to pay tithe and you give into the building fund, the parking lot fund, the Ursha fund, the choir fund, the carpet fund. Every six weeks, we got a different fund. So take your wife on a vacation. Take care of your household. Start a savings account that you've never started in your entire life. Pay off that debt that's just been lingering. And some of you leaders and pastors are squirming right now because you are starting to see that I really don't have the faith that I think I have. They're realizing that they really don't have the faith that they've been teaching. And this right here is a joke. Well, they need to give where they're fed. They don't need to be given everywhere else. Again, some of you are not feeding the people. You're not. They wouldn't be in the situations that they're in if you truly were. But give where they're fed. That online church and all that stuff don't work. That was such a joke in the face of people when that virus hit in 2020. I thought y'all said that going to church online, when people would watch, because I'm from Houston, watching that Joel Osteen, y'all need to be in the house of the Lord. Okay, then all y'all hopped online. All y'all hopped online, then it was okay. Then God was saying it's okay because of this governmental situation that's going on. Then <laughs> it was okay for people to give online. It was okay for them to get a word online. And pastors have to know that people are going online to other churches and getting the words that they need, even though they come to your building because they feel like they're not getting fed. I know at least five of them. And they go to this church online, this church online, and even will give. But then they come there because that's grandma's church. That's the only church they've known. They've been a member, but they're not getting fed. Several people feel like that, that I know personally, but I know it's all across the world. They go to these buildings. They're not getting fed, but then they'll go consistently online. And so a lot of leaders are realizing that people are waking up to the fact that they don't have to come to your building to get a word. And if they aren't giving like you think they should be giving or based on the needs of the church, then maybe you're not bringing the good news. Maybe you're not giving them the word that they need. You think that you are. Maybe you're just performing. And here's something I want to leave you with. That when you talk about tithing, you got to tithe. That puts chains on people. That puts a number and people, if you know, they have these chains on them, they can only give so much. But if you free the people and you let them know you can give as much as you want, you can give any amount that you want. They're free when somebody just picture it. When somebody's hands are free from the chains, you'll probably get more. Also, lastly, will a man rob God? They just want to put that on the people so bad. But there's so many different perspectives that you need to look at because the the priests were handling the money in the altar. Who's to say that they were bringing the full tithe in there? Who's to say that they weren't the ones robbing God? And then it said that you need to take care of God's house first you, and, and then take care of your needs. Who says that that's God's house, number one? 
just because you put your name and title on a building. And who's to say that you are God? It, you keep equating that you are God just because you say it's the house of God. He said, your Bible says, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you invited me in. When I needed clothes, you gave me clothes. When I was sick, you looked after me. And when I was in prison, you came to visit me. That's God. But constantly equating you as the leader and the house, that's God. When we don't know what y'all are doing with the money, because you don't tell us, unless you tell us. But to equate you as God in the house of God, even though you may not say so, but the demands of people's finances to be in that house, people aren't falling for that anymore. People are waking up. That's God. He said, when I was this, you fed me. You understand what I'm saying? So most churches are not even doing that. You're wanting them to bring it in so you can pay you, pay the musician, pay the things of this house. And the people that are hungry, naked, thirsty, uninvited, all the things are being left out and not taken care of. God himself is being neglected according to the scriptures that you read or don't read.